Adrenaline in my soul. That's what we need right now. We need some adrenaline to get us through this Smackdown review. Welcome back, guys, to Fog Wrestling. Friday night, uneventful, same old shit. We're sitting here, left for dead. Where's Bill with his pain pills when you need them? Because that's what we need right now. Watching Smackdown, 1 a.m. to 3 a.m. And what did we get? Essentially, what did we get? A boring ass promo where magically Logan Paul was just announced as the number one contender. A bunch of King and Queen King of the Ring matches where pretty much all of them outside the main event was extremely predictable. And even then, the main event is just a. It's Randy Orton, AJ Styles. Feel like we've seen it many times before. No rivalry, no feud here. No nothing. Orton wins with an RKO out of nowhere, even though we've seen so many RKOs now that none of them are out of nowhere because you know they're coming. And it's an uneventful way to end the show. Orton with RKO. Orton poses. Smackdown goes off the air. No excitement. Nothing intriguing. Bland match. Orton advances. Big wow. If AJ advanced, would it have made any difference? No. I mean, like, I mean what are we doing here? What are we doing here? And the one match that had story, LA Knight against Escobar, gets demoted to the WWE Lab Offensive. Yeah, yeah, now, I mean, I'm not going to say here that oh, it was great storytelling, but at least they interacted with each other last week on SmackDown. Knight and Escobar were involved in a promo talking about tonight's match, but for some reason that's the one match that they decide to can. Also, in the women's tournament, who's Tiffany Stratton against? I don't know, right? But obviously it was Tammy Tonga against Angelo Dawkins. Styles, AJ, what was the other one? Uh, Carmelo Hayes, Baron Corbin. You know what? I look at these four matches and I'm thinking, all of them deserve a place on the show. Because you need Tammy Tonga. Carmelo Hayes is just fresh. AJ Orton's big match in its own right. And then LA Knight against Santos Escobar. Yeah, LA Knight's getting pushed. But you know what the problem is? Don't you do? You fucking drop two women's matches, but no nah, equality. We need to have free and free. Oh, <laughs> fuck off! That's the pro. No, that's how you fix it. That is, but you guarantee. You see, you you know for a fact if they did take away two of the four women's matches and they showed all four men's matches, people would be on Twitter complaining. Yeah. Sexism, misogyny. What happened to the Triple H man that was walking around New York 98 burying Pakistani taxi drivers? Being a wee bit edgy. He's lost his edge. Like he lost a bit of his I'm heart. Not, 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 you from Pakistan? Uh, do you like DX? Oh. I mean, what? Come on. What the fuck is this? You Triple in H. the spare room, do you like this flippy dippy fake wrestling? Aha, uh-huh, amigo, yeah. Hum da hum da hum da hum da hum da hum da I mean, come on, what are we doing here? Triple H, pull your big nose out of, I don't know who's... No, why are we getting, right, oh, seriously, like, why are we getting Bianca Belair against Candice LeRae on telly instead of LA Knight at Escobar? I don't know, but this is, this is exhibit A of how you don't get someone over. LA Knight, not even good enough to be on the show, has to have his King of the Ring match on a live event. You know what, you can almost accept them thinking, right, we can't really do eight matches on SmackDown, but there was no excuse for not getting through the eight matches on Raw. And another thing, Randy Orton came out around about the half an hour mark left of the show for his match. Did, did AJ Styles, Randy Orton really need to last half an hour? No. No? Everything is dragged out, man. Everything is boring. Even the entrances are boring. I'm pretty sure back in the day, like, the people walk to the ring relatively quick. See, now it's like, everyone's, everyone's got, like, an Undertaker-style entrance. Five minutes to get through the fucking top of the ramp to the ring. What's if, happening? If Tony Khan can get TPS to run over, then why can't they get Fox to run over? That's a good point, actually. You know what I mean? But anyway, let's let's begin. Yeah, let's begin. Nick Aldas, the so-called greatest GM. You know what? I would actually go as far as saying anyone who believes that Nick Aldas is the greatest general manager for, manager of all time deserves to die. I don't think that's too harsh. If you believe this is the best GM of all time, then I have nothing to say to you. Yeah, I have nothing to say to you. Now, I don't mind you liking him, right? And I don't mind you having him maybe high up, like, I don't know, top 10 or something like that. but uh, to have this guy as the, and by top 10 I mean sneaking a place at 10th, but to have this guy as the, he's just so fucking boring. 
He and, and he's not any better than Adam Pearce. He's not. We we just think he is because Adam Pearce has been there longer and Nick Aldas isn't as stale. I guarantee you, man. See if Adam Pearce left tomorrow and Nick Aldas. See in two years' time, you'd be like, this Nick Aldas guy is boring as fuck. Well, forget about two years' time. What about tonight? I'm thinking he's boring as fuck. I think the best GM that we've seen in the past five years has been Sonia Deville, but for some reason nobody liked her. And, and that's the problem right there. If Sonia <laughs> Deville's going up against Bischoff or Heyman, you're not thinking she's the best. No. Oh, I... No, I, I, fuck it. Uh, I Even hate. in the WWE games, when I'm playing my GM, I'd, I'd rather go against Sonya Deville than Adam Pearce. Adam Pearce I just, just hate Twitter and the, the, the age of social media. These faceless, sad bastards posting things like, oh, we are truly blessed living in an era of Triple H where we've got great GMs like Nick Aldis and Adam Pearce that would rival any GM. No, you just you just haven't watched anything. No, but seriously, right, anyone that likes Adam Pearce and Nick Aldis... Let us know in the comments down below, like, what's the one segment they've been in, or what's the one promo they've cut, or what's the one superstar they've interacted with where you've went, you know what, that was great. Where's their moment? Where's their Eric Bischoff feuding with um, Stone Cold? Where's their Las Vegas roulette wheel? You know, where's that iconic debut where you've got Bischoff coming from WCW and shaking hands with Vince McMahon? at a WWE Raw event. Where's that moment with Nick Aldas or Adam Pearce? No there. There's no happening. Where's the Eric Bischoff, Stephanie McMahon feud? Where, where is it? Controversy creates cash. Where's the controversy with Adam Pearce and Nick Aldas? The only thing controversial is they're so fucking boring, I'm actually shocked they're employed by the company. Yeah. That's the controversy I'm seeing here. But Nick Aldas comes out, welcomes Cody Rhodes, Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Universal Champion, Cody Rhodes. Adrenaline, a crowd, oh, 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 Cody Rhodes comes down looking boring as fuck. Hey guys, what do you want to talk about? And we know that you're going to talk about the same shit you talk about every week. And then, Nick Aldas, well, hey Cody, before we talk about it, there's one more guy that needs to be here. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the United States Champion and the challenger at Saudi Arabia rehab, Logan Paul. Then Logan Paul comes out with his shite theme. And then Logan Paul's the only guy out the three that looks charismatic, the only guy that can actually cut a half-decent promo. The yeah. belt is too big on Cody Rhodes, and not just literally. I mean, it just is. And, and Cody Rhodes is stoning out there, man, and he, he says that Logan Paul's a dumbass. I mean, Co Cody Rhodes is sitting out there, faceless expressions. He, he's looking like a deer in the headlights. No, the problem is, though, for me, right, we can bury Priest. At least at least with Priest, there's a, like... There's at not least much, you know he sucks. Yeah, no, but there's not much shelf life there. I think he could lose it relatively soon. I think Cody, Cody Rhodes is going to probably hold this for, like, a year and a half. Ah, WrestleMania 50 or something like that. Fuck me. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, that's it really. Logan Paul comes out and says, how can you finish the story when it's not even your story? And he talks about everything that he's done and how him and Cody basically kind of came into WWE at the same time. And Logan Paul's trumped Cody almost every, every point of his career. And you know what? I mean, I'm not going to say that that's true regarding WrestleMania because Cody Rhodes ended the four-year streak, so obviously that was a bigger moment. But I mean, Logan Paul probably has had more highlight real moments though than Cody Rhodes since they it, both came in back in the WWE a few years ago. Yeah, no, I would agree. I, I, I actually, you see, if you take out the interference, I preferred the Logan Paul Roman Reigns match they did. Yeah, so I mean, there and, you go. I think Logan Paul's actually even. Even like the match he had with Rollins, I thought was alright. And even his feud with the Miz, I, I would and like yo, the, the I mean the Rumble spot with Ricochet as well, which I mean it is a pretty memorable moment, right? But I would say Logan Paul's time. Okay, I think stuff was alright. See Logan Paul's time in WWE in terms of like what he's been able to achieve. Like I get it, it's not, wrestling ain't the same. Promos are just shite these days. I would near give the guy a ten out of ten. I don't see what else the guy could do. For this current era? That's, yeah. I don't think that's far away. Honestly, but anyway, like, what could he do? That's going to be the match at Saudi Arabia. I mean, does anybody really care? I don't. We all know Logan Paul's not going to win. So, that is I, mean, I, know is. He, I know he's accustomed to Dyer Wee by now, but he, he's making Cody Rhodes stick out like a sore thumb. 
Yeah, you see, can't... see the true faces of companies like Austin, Hogan, Cena. See when someone from outside the realm came in, they were never overshadowed by them. No, and he was here. Now the the Cody Rhodes bum liquor community can pretend that he wasn't, but go go rewatch it. He fucking was. Everybody thinks you're a dumbass. When did when did the Rock or Austin or Hogan, you know, ever look second best when they were in the ring? No. When when did they ever come across as not the star? And that's what you've got when Cody Rhodes is standing here next to Logan it's Paul. Like when Booker T showed up, right, and he's cutting this like ten minute promo, and the Rock just buries him. He's like, oh, "Do we need you to park some cars?" <laughs> I mean, I like Booker T, but at that moment, it was like you know, you you, you quite clearly know that the Rock's up here, and Booker T's like somewhere down there. And <sighs> I don't know, Cody Rhodes, my fucking sucks. Anyway, people will pretend this is the greatest run of all time. We'll see what happens. Whatever. Up next, Nia Jax versus Naomi. Brilliant match. I feel bad for Naomi. I don't think she should be losing to Nia Jax. Fucking Nia Jax sucks. Us? I don't think we should be bearing witness to this match. Uh, but you know what? Na- Naomi is a bum. It is what it is. Jobber. Should she have stayed in TNA? Probably not. You know, come back to WWE. Make some money. That's what it's all about at the end of the day. But I don't think Naomi's ever going to do anything amazing. She's always going to be a person that... Maybe gets the odd title shot. I mean, will she win another championship before she retires? Possibly. With two titles and Raw and SmackDown. So, I mean, maybe. But, yeah, she lost this one. Not surprising. Jax hits her with the Annihilator from the uh, the middle rope. One, two, three. I mean, was it the worst match? No, but everything Nia Jax does looks sloppy. So It does. Uh, and again, like, see, see by the time this match ended, you're about 40 minutes in. Yeah. So, I mean, what? With nothing happening. We then got a backstage uh, interview with Baron Corbin. He said he's changed a lot since he was on SmackDown last time. He didn't know if he was a king or if he was sad or if he was happy or if he was broke. But now he knows who he is and he has found himself. And tonight he's going to wreck shop. Carmelo Hayes joins the conversation. He congratulates Corbin on getting called up to the main roster. But he says he forgot Corbin was drafted in the first place. So... Yeah, there you go. I mean, big wow, I get it. You were drafted first, but does it really matter? You both ended up in SmackDown. Uh, then Melo says the last guy that tried to give him advice had to pull out of the tournament. And that is what Corbin should have done, because he's going to run circles around him tonight, just like he would have done. Bobby Lashley. See, see if the roster, right, during the draft was actually picked on, like, who was like the best down to who was the worst. This would make sense. Like, Punk with McIntyre. But see when you've got... Fucking jobbers like Bianca Belair, and among others, I mean, uh, that are getting picked before actual people that are good, just for the just for the sake of equality again. Again, but look at the original draft. I mean, Kurt Angle fuming that he was picked second under the Rock, and that was a legit draft. This draft we got a few weeks ago wasn't a legit draft. It was just, oh well, here we need to have a woman in there. We need to have a tag team in there. I mean, you've got, like, CM Punk being drafted down, McIntyre being drafted way down, Bloodline getting drafted in round three. And they did, you know, they, they called upon that tonight again. Solo Sokoa accused Paul Heyman of... Ta- I mean, I guess... But even then, without Roman Reigns, the Bloodline should still be getting picked higher than round three, but whatever. Uh, Camilo Hayes defeats Baron Corbin after a DIY thing yet. Who cares about DIY? Are they on SmackDown? Are they on Raw? I personally don't care. I'm assuming it's SmackDown yep, considering there was a thing yet, but fuck that. Um, Carmelo Hayes inside Cradle beats Baron Corbin. I mean, Corbin doesn't really lose clean, but I mean, it's a loss at the end of the day. I mean, the guy's back after finding himself in NXT, and the first thing he, the first thing he finds on SmackDown is an L. Well, it's the correct decision. No, it is, but I mean. No, I get your point, bro. <laughs> like, fuck. Why not give Corbin a Angelo Dawkins or something? Give him, a, give him a nice wee win or something to return to SmackDown on. Uh, right, after that, we got Kayla Braxton backstage interview with Bailey. Bailey, she is the champion. Didn't really say anything here. She looked at. What's her name? Piper Nevin. Piper Nevin then looked at Bailey's championship like it was a big massive cheeseburger. I want a happy meal. Uh, Times 25. So Bailey. that was that. Nothing really interesting here from uh, Bailey. No more medium deals, Walter. Large meals. Holy shit. Ka- Kayla Braxton and Brian Saxton. Sounds very similar, doesn't it? Mm, a wee bit. Kayla Braxton, Brian Saxton. It's close to the ten at the end. 
Well, there you go. Anyway, uh, so I think it's more at the 10. It's got the AX as well. Break it down. Anyway, so uh, yeah, they had that. Bailey cut a boring promo. Randy Orton cut a boring... Look, I like Randy Orton, but he can be boring as fuck at times. He can be, but you know what? He's, he's the apex predator. He's the legend killer. What's Bailey apart from looking like fucking Snoopy? She, she needs to lose this belt. Snoop Dogg? No, not like the dog Snoopy. It's got the really long face. Aye. That's what Bailey looks like in my eyes. But she, they don't they don't put her on any posters, right? She is just a jobber. Yeah, she got, the, birth. she got the jobber treatment going into WrestleMania. Pe- see some people, right? All they've got is the story. They don't have the character or the star power to back it up. It made sense for Bailey to dethrone Io Sky. But see if she lost it the next night, you couldn't have complained, put it that way. That, that Sometimes things like that just make sense. It's like, it's like Chad Gable, right? I think it made way more sense for him to beat Gunther than Sami Zayn. But the end of the day is, Sami Zayn's a bit of a bigger star than Chad Gable, and that's probably why he beat him. But Chad Gable had the whole, he can't get it. He, he, he's had four matches and he still can't get it done. Is he? I mean, I'd rather see Chad Gable with the belt well, than Sami Zayn. Yes, but Sami Zayn was in the bloodline, man. He's, he, aye, over a of, year ago. Aye, but in terms of stature, he's above him. I would say his stock has dropped. Well, it has in the stopped. past year, but anyway, who cares? Uh, third match: Jade Cargo defeats Piper Nevin. Hits her finisher. Impressive, I guess, hitting it on a big fatty like that. So fair play to Jade Cargo. Someone commented saying, "Do you have a problem with people that are uh, big?" Aye, they're overweight and fat. Let's move on. Um, then we get Bianca Belair who comes out. So Jade Cargo was walking to the back. Bianca Belair was walking out. They touched each other's titles. Whoop they do. Bianca Belair squashes Candice LeRae. She hurt her leg coming off the top rope doing a moonsault or whatever. After the match, she's selling the leg. She can't get to her feet. The referee helps Bianca Belair up to her feet. And as soon as Bianca Belair is up to her feet, despite hopping on one leg trying to sell the injury... The first thing she does is grab her ponytail and start swinging it around. I fucking hate Bianca Belair with a passion. What a stupid, dumb bitch. Seriously, man. You, your, your leg's supposedly injured. Your heart, you can barely stand. Yet the first thing that you automatically think of doing when you get up to your feet is is spin your ponytail around a hundred times. I mean, it's fucking dumb. I mean, that, that makes no sense whatsoever. No one annoys me though, right? How can the hair be the gimmick? The only reason hair was ever made a gimmick was in the preparation of like a hair versus hair match or a hair forfeit. I would love to see it. Plain ride for hell. Can someone no snip that bastard? No, you know, I'd love to see it too. But if, if, when you look at those matches in the history, like they, they only ever played on it when like a hair versus hair was coming up. Like Angle Edge, I remember I think Jericho and Nash did it in like 04. Um, and there's what other ones as well. It's like, how, how can that be your gimmick? Waving your hair around. No, but she's trying to... You no, know I mean, she's trying to sell an injury and the first thing she does is start put, swinging her hair. Yeah. I mean... It, uh, oh, favorite. no matter what, I have to get my wee signature pose in. Doesn't matter if I'm selling a fucking injury. Wise up, man. Come on. It's pathetic. I mean, anyone who's legitimately injured will sell the injury. As soon as she, as, as soon as she starts swinging her ponytail, you're, you lose all believability in her leg that is supposedly injured. But anyway... Then we got a Nakamura promo where he basically spoke he spoke like Japanese and it translated to English. Or he either spoke broken English, I can't tell what it was to be fair. Get well soon. Get well soon, I'm the master of strong star. But uh, aye, I mean, lyrics, or not lyrics, uh, subtitles popped up on the screen. Probably the best promo of the night. <laughs> I didn't understand the word. <laughs> Big Nakamura, buddy. Uh, then we got... What do we get next after this? Andrade Diotario Vignetti. Just release him. Just release him. And I know some people are going to come... Why are you saying release the Mexican? Because the Mexican wrestlers fucking suck. Look at them all. Andrade, LWO, Legado del Fantasma, man. They're not even worth one second of TV time, right? Rey Mysterio, Ed the Guerrero, outside of those two, I mean, it's a it's a bad bunch to pick from. Those are the two Mexican stars. Everyone else sucks. Yeah, but they're still a lot better, man. Like, Psychosis. Super crazy. At least they added something. Ah, but... People like that. Chavo Guerrero. Hector Guerrero. 
That's plenty. But yo, it's, why are you not showing anybody white? See, like the new quarter uh, crack yeah, we, clue, uh, new catch clue, uh, catch clue. <laughs> we've got Tyler Bate and Pete Dunn. I, don't release them. Hang them. They're fucking shite. <laughs> I took that far. Uh, well, no, I'll tell you this, right? The LW, I'd say every single Mexican on the roster is better than Pete Dunn and Tyler Bate. 100%. Yeah. But I'm not going to sit here and say that the Me- all the Mexican wrestlers are great in case someone gets offended by it. They, they, I mean, they all suck. You look at AEW, anytime like Penta or El Figio or whatever he's called or anybody with a mask comes on and the ratings just fucking tank. It's like you don't care. There's only one person, right, that needs a mask in wrestling. And it's Shayna Baszler. Let's move on. Right, uh, backstage bloodline segment. Paul Heyman is wanting to have a moment with Solo. Solo then speaks about why did you lie about pulling Roman for the draft? That one backfired on us. Because of you, we got drafted third. We should have been number one. Are you trying to take money out of my pocket, Paul? Are you trying to stop me from feeding my kids, Paul? Um, I don't think Paul Heyman has any problem feeding himself, though, so maybe he can lend you some money. What is Paul Heyman's overacting, by the way? It's awful. It is. Yeah. Especially I, when he was out of ringside. Yeah, I think Paul I think Paul Heyman's been overacting for a long, long time. I'd say about a decade now. Yeah. I think it's overacting. So Sokoa's fucking awful. doing a transitional move in the ring. And, 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 he, <laughs> you know, and he, 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 he's treating it... As if he's doing attempted murder? Aye. So... And this is the guy that ran ECW. I mean, didn't pay anyone, right? But, I mean, look at the shit they've been doing in ECW. Sabu's gluing his intestines together. I mean, Paul Heyman's acting as if he's just received a check that's bounced. From Mr. Heyman himself. I mean, <laughs> anyway, right. Um, so, I mean, at least they touched on the draft here, but who cares? Sol Sokoa says that he spoke to Roman Reigns and he's now in charge. So there you go. He's in charge. Then we get... Tama Tonga versus Angelo Dawkins. I mean, why not just give Tonga a pass? Give him a bye into the next round. Yeah. What, what's the point of this? No, actually, see if you, see if you actually think of it. If Bobby Lashley can't wrestle, or he's injured... Or Demote whatever, this match? Yeah. And have LA fucking night on? Just give Tama Tonga a bye? Or have this match be at a live event? Really? Angelo Dawkins is worth having on TV more than LA Knight? Who decided that? I don't know who decided that, but again, I mean, I, I, I understand why they want Tammy Tonga on the show, right? In, a, in his first, like, match on television, right? He's new. He's a month new. Yeah, this could have just been a beatdown. They could have just beat down the Street Profits backstage. Yeah, they one of them could have went, here, I'll take the spot. And they just went, no, and just battered the shit clean out of him. Then Heyman can do his wee goofy reaction when they leave these two in a pile of blood and chocolate. So I do. Well, what? <laughs> anyway, there you go. Um... Shite. Next week we're getting a contract signing with Cody Rhodes and Logan Paul. Wow! Ho, ho, ho. I can't wait. Cody Rhodes is going to come out with his pen and paper. What do you want to talk about? What do you want to sign about? <laughs> right up next we get Blair Devonport release. Um, I, I just I don't know. Fucking shite. Man. A lot of people think I'm a narcissistic, <laughs> aren't you though? I don't get it. Why is she not in this tournament? I don't get it. Like. Fallon Henley up to Raw and she's not in the tournament. You've got Blair Davenport, SmackDown. She's not in the tournament. I hate it the way NXT handled the draft. All these heels and faces marking Sitting out. beside each other? Because they all got called up to the main roster. Could you make, it look, each other. I mean, could you make it look any less fucking yeah. fake? And the only thing worse is if Shawn Michaels was there with a wonky eye and a fucking pish cowboy hat. Oh wait, that did happen. Do you want the red cap or the blue cap, son? It wasn't that long ago I thought, you know what? Bret Hart looks like shite and Michaels looks good. <laughs> it has to be the... You know what? Karma must fucking exist. <laughs> See those drugs that Sean did? He must have stored them on his eye and it just burst one day. Anyway. You, think, you think we'll see a Sean Michaels match, no? No. No? Uh, no. He'll get lost. His eye will take him one way and his other eye will fucking... <laughs> it's mad that people always thought we were going to get a Sean Michaels coming to retirement from Michaels versus AJ Styles. Fuck me, AJ Styles is like the age that Mike... AJ Styles is older than Michael was when he's retired. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, but that Almo Dome match was, what, 2017 that got hyped up? Yeah, seven years ago. Seven years ago? What age is Mike? I mean, I think he was 53 then. I guess he did have the match at, what, that Saudi show with DX and Brothers of Destruction. But anyway, AJ, Orton... What match are you talking about? The Rumble? 
between him and Styles. He wasn't in it, was he? I'm not sure they were going to do it though. Why didn't they? I don't know. I, I, well, get, no, I'm get, just talking about the fact that it would have been a year before the DX one, so why not? Get, give me 60-year-old Shawn Michaels over half the shite on it. All the shite on this show. Right, main event time, Randy on AJ Styles, first round match, King Ring tournament. Lasted too long. Should a, should a first round match really go this long? We've seen Gunther Sheamus go 23 minutes on Raw. I mean, it's the first round. What are we doing? Yeah. Some see, people want to drag us across the summer. See, back in the day, I mean, you, you could argue that the semi-finals and finals combined wouldn't have took 23 minutes. No. Yet, the, these are taking... I don't understand, man. These are taking 23 like, minutes. They can't even generate, right, a story between any of the matches, apart from the one they didn't show. And then back in the day, you'd cut you, you'd cut Angle, Rhino, Edge and Christian, all being best buddies. Like, oh, who's going to win? And then Kurt Angle's got his own feud with fucking Shane McMahon. On the same card, yeah. And anyway, I mean, not, and, and today they can't. They, they do one half-ass storyline, and it's the one that's on a live event. Make it make sense. But Triple H is cooking, isn't he? Triple H cooks. Anyway, Randy Orton cooked up. AJ Styles went RKO. End at the show with Orton doing his repose, and that's it. Nothing intriguing. Nothing exciting. Nothing to anticipate next week. I mean, where's the cliffhanger? What's to talk about? Like, remember when SmackDown Raw always used to end with like a something edgy happening or a cliffhanger or a reveal or a shocking moment, something that would get you talking? What, what is there to talk? In the, in, the, in the words of Cody Rhodes, what do you want to talk about? Fuck all, nothing to talk about. Orton, RKO, 1, 2, 3, boom, done, finished, that's it, over. Let's give it a rating. Let's, t let's cook. Our rating I'm here for the show. I'm going to one out of ten. I'm sorry. This is just as bad as the draft shows for me. You, you've got a serious lack of promos and just six boring-ass matches that are all predictable. Apart from the main event, but again, I knew Orton would win. AJ Styles just had his wee run. They're not going to have Orton lose. It's predictable, boring shite. Yeah, plus Orton just lost at the pay-per-view there, so... You guys just say you don't like it for the clicks. Aye, dead on. Dead on. The show is shite. How can anyone defend this? I wish I liked it. I don't like sitting up to 3am watching a shite show, but here's got to be done. In terms of a rating, what will I give it? Um, you know, Camilla Hayes. I don't know. Camilla Hayes and the wee Baron Corbin backstage promo was alright. Opening promo was pish. I mean, Bloodline stuff, I guess, was no bad. Uh, I'll give it a 3 out of 10. So. That's a 2. 2 out of 10, guys. There you go. 2 for shite. Till next time. Peace.